Okay, so what's the big deal about quantifying uncertainties at, uh, at these different confidence intervals? Well, the reason that we want to um, quantify these uncertainties is because of this concept of propagation of uncertainty. Oftentimes, we need to make multiple measurements, each of these measurements having some type of uncertainty so that we can determine a value of interest. So one example would be electrical power, which is the product of current and voltage. If we use a digital multimeter to measure current and voltage, we're going to have some uncertainty in that current measurement and that voltage measurement. When you design a system as an engineer, you often have to account for the variability in the components comprising the system. So if you're not just making one um, prototype, but you have to design for manufacturing thousands of pieces, um, the, uh, the tolerances or the uncertainty in the measurements um, can add up. Uh, a common example of this would be if we were going to look at, say, a cube. Right, and or or something, uh, some um, volume that has a length, a width, and a height to it. We know that to compute the volume, we can take uh, our different measurements and multiply the length and the width and the height together to come up with the total volume. But the question is, what happens if our length varies with some um, has some variability to it? So length plus or minus some uncertainty, uh, which I'm going to call um, delta L. Okay, um, the width is known with some uncertainty, delta W, and the height is known with some uncertainty in it. Okay, how do we combine these uncertainties to determine ultimately what the variability, the most likely variability, is going to be in the volume? Okay? And that is the concept of propagation of uncertainty that we need to discuss. All right, so. What I'm going to do is uh, formally go, uh, go through how we uh, make this happen. How do we uh, combine or propagate uh, the uncertainties of multiple parameters in a system? Um, we're going to do it uh, theory way and then uh, a couple of videos uh, on the examples of how we actually calculate this. Okay, so um, there are two types of uncertainty that we'll be um, concerned with. One is the maximum uncertainty. So uh, for a given set of measurements to estimate the maximum uncertainty, what we can do is we can take the function that um, contains all of our different measurements that have uncertainty values associated with it. So this is uh, this top line right here represents a function uh, that has multiple measurements associated with it, x1, x2, x3, up to xn. These are all measured values that have some uncertainty associated with it. All of these measurement values have some uncertainty, and I'm going to denote the uncertainty as w here in this formula, x sub i. So this um, x sub i is the uncertainty in, x, in each of these x values. So x1 has some w sub x1, um, x2 has some w x sub 2, so on and so forth. So the way that we're going to do um, the calculation is we have to uh, take the, to find the total uncertainty uh, from combining all of these measurements together using this formula or this function, we're going to ha have to take the partial derivative of the function with respect to each of the individual measurement variables. We'll take that partial derivative and multiply it by the uncertainty in the variable with respect with uh, that we took the partial derivative with respect to, and take the absolute value and repeat that for each of the measurements um, that were taken. So we have to take the partial derivative of the function um, that tells us how we combine all of the measurements to get the parameter that we're interested in. We have to take the partial derivative of that function with respect to each of the variables that were measured. Okay, This gives us the maximum uncertainty, the worst case uncertainty. Now, it's extremely unlikely that all of the measurement errors will contribute to the total error by their maximum amount. In other words, it's um, not very likely, it's statistically unlikely that all of our measurements are going to be off by the greatest amount possible. And that's what maximum uncertainty tells us. We can also do what's called the best estimate of uncertainty. And this takes into, the, uh, into account the fact that not all of our measurements are going to be as bad as they possibly could be. And this uses the root sum of squares method. Basically, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to um, take the function 
uh, that describes the uh, combination of all of the variables that were measured, and we have to take the partial derivative of that function with respect to all of the measurement variables. We're going to multiply that partial derivative for each of the variables by the uncertainty in the, um, in the uh, variable uh, with which the function was the derivative of the function was taken with respect to. And we have to add all of those. We're going to square that value, excuse me, and then add all of them up and then finally take the square root of it. So um, this gives us the best estimate of uncertainty, um, assuming that this is a non-worst case scenario, or this is the most likely uncertainty uh, that's going to occur. So for both the uh, maximum and the best estimate uncertainty, all of the uncertainties must be known or provided at the same level of confidence. So we, if, if all of the uncertainties, these W values, are known for 90% confidence interval, then our uh, final combined uncertainty, our best estimate or our maximum uncertainty, will also have a 90% confidence level with it. Okay. What we'll do is we're going to go through some examples in, in the next video uh, to show how we actually implement this.